All right, good morning, everyone, and uh, fancy seeing you here. It's a it's a gloomy uh, but quiet Sunday here in Amsterdam, and we're continuing our Amsterdam adventure, not by eating traditional European Dutch food per se, but food that has really deep ties to Dutch colonial history. Of course, I'm talking about Surinamese and Indonesian food, which has made their way all the way to Amsterdam and are two very popular genres of food in this city. But first, we need some coffee, not necessarily Indonesian or Surinamese, but it's got some light ties to Dutch history as well, so let's go. So to start off the day, we visited one of the most popular cafes in Amsterdam called Bakers and Roasters. It's actually a New Zealand style cafe, thanks to one of the owners being a fellow Kiwi. So you'll find New Zealand wines, some Kiwi cafe staples, and even a good morning in Tereo Māori or Atamarie on the menu. So of course, I had to get a flat white, which is my go-to coffee back in New Zealand. And let me tell you, now that's a real New Zealand flat white. That's so good. Easily the best coffee I had the entire Europe trip. Obviously, I had to get a classic eggs Benny, which had strips of bacon, toast bread, hollandaise, and two perfectly poached eggs. I mean, look at that runny yolk perfection. Yanbi got a BNR special, which was as pretty as it was filling, and it had poached eggs, toast, bacon, a mini stack of pancakes, cue that maple syrup, oh yeah, look at that, and an avocado, cause we love some healthy fats. Also, fun fact, the Dutch explorer Abel Tasman was the first European to sight New Zealand in 1642, 300 years later than the Maori who discovered and settled New Zealand back in the 14th century. So yeah, there's your dose of light ties to Dutch history this morning, on to the Rijksmuseum. Really good cafe food, shout out to the Kiwi owner. Definitely reminded us of the cafes back in Auckland. Great coffee, great food, great vibe. Um, yeah, we're just on our way now to the, how do you pronounce it? The Rijksmuseum. Rijksmuseum. Yes. We're very full. We have the energy to walk around. Let's go. All right, everyone, we made it to the, uh, it's very beautiful, the very beautiful uh, Rijksmuseum. The foyer is like a mixture of uh, modern and old architecture. Um, we got our map. Yes, we got our map. I'm ready to see some nice artifacts, some great paintings, and learn, because we love learning here at what? Oh, yes, that's, yeah, that's the map of the highlights of the museum. Yes, so let's go. The Rijksmuseum is massive. This is the Netherlands' national museum and you should set aside at least three hours to go through its sprawling collection that focuses on Dutch arts and history. The museum is presented roughly in chronological order, so we started in level zero that focuses on the 1100s to 1600s. You can find an abundance of religious paintings and sculptures, as well as really fascinating collections of model ships, weapons, instruments, and artifacts. The upper floors is probably what most of you are here for, but first I really appreciate that the museum had quite a few exhibits on the dark past of Dutch colonial history. As you know, the Dutch East and West India Company administered quite a sizable empire from Suriname, Indonesia, and many other foreign territories. Dutch colonial history aside, the upper floors is where you'll find exhibits from the 1600s onwards with many gorgeous paintings from Dutch masters such as Vermeer and Rembrandt, all culminating in the main attraction of the museum, Rembrandt's Dutch Golden Age masterpiece, The Night Watch. Yemi, Yemi, there's no way we went from Rembrandt and The Night Watch to three lines. <laughs> in a circle. <laughs> All right, that was a very nice and educational visit to the Rijksmuseum, the National Museum of the Netherlands. Also shout out, if you played Horizon Forbidden West, when Aloy gets captured by Tilda, she brings Aloy to Tilda's home and in the secret vault is actually paintings and sculptures from the Rijksmuseum. It was actually a collab between the Guerrilla Games Studio and the Rijksmuseum. The Night Watch, Rembrandt's painting of his son, Jeremiah lamenting the fall of Jerusalem. Those were there and we saw it. It was really awesome. As any museum visit does, we have worked up an appetite and now we're gonna try some Surinamese food, which should be very interesting. Let's eat. Alright, it's fun. 
lunchtime. Um, we're just kind of like just down the road from the Albert Coit Market at New Aldina, a Surinamese and Chinese restaurant. Also, if you notice, like just like Surinamese food in general, it's always mixed with one other cuisine. So this one's called Surinamese and Chinese, but some you'll see Surinamese and Indonesian, Surinamese and um, Indian. <coughs> and the reason why like Surinamese restaurants are always conjoined with those two is because when Suriname was a Dutch colony, the Dutch West Indies company would bring slaves from all over, all over the world, all over the empire, from Indonesia, um, ports in India, and of course some Chinese people also made their way there. And all those people intermingled with the local Surinamese culture and made this a distinct cuisine that's you know very interwoven and has influences from all around the world. And so we're gonna start it off with a Fernandez. I've never heard of this before, but it was like a Surinamese soda cherry bouquet. Oh yeah, that's nice. That's just like a nice cherry soda. But first dish, we already got it. It's called bakabana. It's just it's basically like a fried banana with some peanut sauce. I feel like this is very Indonesian. You know, just get some peanut sauce in there. Hmm. Yeah, that's a satay sauce, all right. I don't think I've ever had banana and satay before, so that's a very interesting combo. This is a nice snack. We got some rice and noodles and a roti. A mixed bag of Surinamese goodies. Let's eat. We got a chai with chicken satay. We love our chicken satay. A dark, peanutty sauce. Mm, that is really good. Juicy, tender, and the peanut sauce is like very savory. I really like that. They also have a couple of sauces, which I'm very intrigued by. Um, obviously, one of them is chili oil, all right? Some sort of like sriracha-esque chili. I'm guessing this is some sort of ketchup manis, because you know, Indonesian. This one, I am very intrigued by. I have no idea what this yellow one is. I have no idea what this is. This yellow thing, but I'm going to try it on anyway. Hmm, it's some sort of mustard. That's what it is. That's nice. I've never had mustard and satay before. Let's get to these other dishes. Okay, so we got their fried noodles special and obviously you can see the Chinese influence coming through in this dish. There's a lot of delectable meats on top and some noodles that are just glistening. Oh, gonna have the first bite with some barbecue pork. I drizzled just a bit of chili oil on top. <laughs> That is very comforting. And the chili oil just like added so much more flavor and heat to it. And the noodles have like really nice bouncy texture. They're a bit thin, but they have a bit of a chew as well, which is delicious. I wonder what this is, like a sausage? Mm. It kind of reminds me of lobak, but it's not lobak. It's just like a very meaty bite. Yeah. All right, next dish. Um, it's called Moxi Meti. I think that's in reference to the sauce. It usually comes with like plain rice, but we got fried rice to go with it. I think we'll get the sausage thing with some rice. Mm. I don't know what it is, but it's good. It's like slightly sweet and savory. There's got to be some soy in there, but that's fantastic. That's really good. So, you know, you got the roast pork, you got the barbecue pork classic stuff that we really love at Chinese places. I think we're gonna go freestyle. You know, mustard, chili oil. Oh yeah. Mm. That's amazing. The mustard just changes everything, unlike anything that we've had in a Chinese restaurant. The fried rice is really good as well. Finally, we are onto our main attraction, which is the roti. It's a very iconic dish. It's got this like very yellow roti with some curried chicken and some potatoes and some long beans and an egg and some cabbage. I'm excited. Down there, the innards. Kind of smells like curry powder mix. Let's do this. Let's break all oh, the chicken. Oh, the chicken looks so juicy. Break off a good amount. Oh yeah, some chicken as well. Mm. That is the stuff we are looking for. That is amazing. The chicken is really tender. 
I think the curry is just like curry powder, you know. The roti, really nice, and um, it's not as like flaky as a actual Indian roti. It's a bit more, it's a bit more pancake-like. It's an in-between of that. I'm just gonna try to taste it by itself. Mm, yep, that's good. Like you can see why it's a popular dish here in the Netherlands. Oh yeah. For our last bite, we're gonna do the ultimate Surinamese rainbow of influence flavors. We're gonna load the roti with the remaining of the things. Chili oil, ketchup mayonnaise, not too so much. The, this chili sauce. The unidentified mustard. You know, I'm just gonna bite it like a burrito. Wow. Mm, that was a beautiful bite. I feel like I could taste like the confluence of history in that bite. You got the Indian, you got the Indonesian, you got the Chinese, you got the Surinamese. I think Yabi was saying as well that they're all familiar flavors, but in new, exciting combinations. I must say, best meal in Amsterdam so far. But we also have dinner to go to, which is gonna be an Indonesian feast. So that's gonna be a heavy hitter as well. Let's get going. So we're here at Vondel Park. It is the main park of Amsterdam. But fun fact, it is actually seven times smaller than Grand Central Park. But it's beautiful, you know, the weather's a bit gloomy, but the vibes are on. You got a lot of people walking, of course, a lot of cyclists, you know. It's very peaceful, there are dogs as well. And yeah, we're just gonna have a leisurely walk. Let's go. <laughs> Before we're going to dinner, I think there's a fry place that I want to hit up that we might not get the opportunity to do tomorrow, so we'll do that now. Let's get some fries! Alright, cheeky fry stop before dinner, even though my stomach's already bursting, but we gotta take off some Dutch food essentials before leaving Amsterdam. This one's another classic fritur or fry house. It's called uh, Vlemink. They've been there since 1887. That's old. That's older than Yamam. But yeah, this is another one of the go-tos. This is a more classic. We went to Fable Friet the other day. That's more of like the modern fry. We got the Orlog mix, which is saute sauce, mayo, and a dash of onions. I'm very excited. You know, I'll get this. I'll get straight into it. <coughs> Oh yeah, I like that. That is a perfect fry. The sauce as well. I like the onions. It adds some acidity to an otherwise junk foodie mix of mayo, saute, and potatoes. Nicely salted as well. Potatoes, perfect texture. You can see why they've been going on since 1887. They also like heaps of sauces to choose from, but I heard Belgium has way more sauces actually, so that'll be very interesting to see. So I'm gonna have a couple more. Nice pre-dinner snack, yes. We find ourselves back at the Pipe. Uh, we just took the metro from Central and we're here at, at Desa, authentic Indonesian restaurant. As you know, Indonesia was a Dutch colony back in the days of the, of the VOC, the Dutch East Indies Company. And as a result of that, there has been a lot of migration from Indonesia to the Netherlands. And that's why here today, you'll find a lot of Indonesian restaurants serving Indonesian food, especially here at the Pipe. But yes, we are here for one thing and one thing only. And it's the famous Indonesian rice table. Indonesian rice table actually isn't Indonesian per se. It was actually created by the Dutch colonial masters in Indonesia 
as a way to basically flex the riches of their colonial possessions to the guests of their stately homes and government houses and stuff where they'd spread all these uh, exotic dishes from their uh, colonial possessions. In a way, it is a Dutch invention, but obviously the dishes are all Indonesian. It's just, they kind of just invented the way to, uh, to present it. That's that's basically what it is. Uh, Are you ready? Oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready too. I am basenge. I am richa richa chicken with peanut sauce, gado gado, veal in soya sauce. This is rendang, green beans, sayur buncis, two sort of condiments, fried potato, sambal goreng kentang, and acar, fried rice and steamed rice. Enjoy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Comes with 11, 11 dishes. This is, I'm so excited. Let's eat. This is the most beautiful Indonesian spread I've ever seen. And I have organized myself a beautiful plate. Look at all these colors. We're gonna start off with the ayam rika rika. So that one is chicken with red pepper sauce. It's this, this one over here. You can see that red sauce. I'm just gonna try it by itself first before having it with like rice or something. Mm. Oh yes, you can taste that like red pepper flavor, that chicken, very nice. I'm gonna chase that with their nasi goreng. Mm. Oh yeah, that's some good rice, super savory. I'll just have another bite of this. Yeah, like there's a little bit of spice that kind of creeps up in the back of your throat. It's really good though. And just to kind of balance out that slight heat, let's have their achara. Achara. Achar. Sorry, I said the Filipino one, which is achar, but it's achar. Mm. Mm. Has like this perfect acidity and brightness. I love Indonesian food. Now this, this is their satay ayam. It's roasted chicken served with a homemade peanut sauce. Let's just dig in. Mm. That is so good. It's just so peanutty, but so savory. Yep slightly sweet. That's how I like my sake sauces. You can't go wrong, but I mean you could. But this one is all the right things. And now moving on to another common Indonesian dish, their beef rendang or their daging rendang. It's beef in a spiced coconut sauce. I can definitely smell a bit of that coconut infusion. Oh yeah. Mm, very tender, but you can still feel like that the fiber of like beef. It's just great. I mean, I'm not surprised. I'm just in heaven. Yeah. I'm gonna do the back half of the rice table, but first, rice. Um, also, by default, it comes with a knife and fork um, on your table, but we all know that th that is not the right way to do it, so we had to get the, the spoon and fork, unless you're eating with your hands, of course. That is the only way to appre fully appreciate Southeast Asian food. Spoon on the right hand, fork on the left hand. Anyway else, you're a weirdo. Actually, I'm gonna start with the gado gado first. We've never had it before, actually. It's the famous Indonesian peanut uh, sauce salad. It's got some uh, beans, cucumber, I think. I'm just gonna put some on my plate. Mmm, yummy. No, interesting. It's like got that peanutty, sweet, soy flavor. I think there's some citrus in that, which cuts through like the, the Moorish peanutiness. That's a nice salad. I'm gonna get one more bite. Mmm. And you just get all these wonderful textures from the snap of the green beans to the softness of the tofu to the crisp of that kropek. That's wonderful. So this, I think, is the ayam bezengik, which is chicken cooked with saffron and coconut milk. Saffron. We're living <laughs> the lives of luxury. It looks like it's got some green chilies, some herbs. The oils are just oiling it up. I'm gonna try it with some white rice this time. Mm, that's really good. Real fragrant, but kind of light as well. The green chilies give that nice chili flavor without the heat. Nice coconutty touch as well. The chicken is really good. White rice, just the quintessential um, soaker of sauces and dampening of salty, intense flavors. Mm, this is like playing deal or no deal, except all the suitcases are open and everything's filled with a million dollars. 
and you can't lose. I've never had veal in Indonesian food. This is the anak sapi ketchup. Does that mean sun in Indonesian? I actually don't know. There's stewed veal in a spicy soy sauce. This one looks like super stewed down. I think there were some specks of fried garlic on top as well. I'll get a combination of the nasi goreng and the white rice. sauce yeah it's like a sweet soy sauce but like cooked down a bit that's really good the beef is like it could have been a bit tender but it's not dry it's equal parts um coconutty sweet savory <coughs> white rice just see like, oh, like i don't understand like imagine eating this with a knife and fork like but no you're missing it. you gotta get this fork. it's just is so efficient. Like, how are you gonna eat this rice with a knife? Like, like what do you like? What do you mean? Like, what is, what, what, what is this? No, look at this. Like, just peak efficiency. Just peak efe efficiency. The people need to know. Oh, that was a fattier piece. That was majestic. I know this might seem really obvious to some of you guys, but you will be surprised how how many people don't know how to eat like this. Change your lives right now. I remember one time I saw someone who did it the reverse way and oh, he yeah. was eating it re like reversed and I was confused. Yeah, unless you're left-handed. He was not left. He was yeah. not left-handed. Cuz then you'd be like Okay, that yeah. that's even worse cuz then cuz then that's counterintuitive. At least if it was with a knife and fork, you can blame your tools, but if you're doing this, that's just that's just weird. You don't even need a knife. Just imagine this is a piece of meat. There's your knife. Like, you don't need this. You just need your brute strength. This is not much duller than than this if you know how to use it. <laughs> that could also apply to it being a murder weapon. Everything all right? Yeah. Take that info as you wish. This is my last bite. <laughs> I specifically saved the satay I am for last. <gasps> And I don't want it to end. We can take this last bite together. Oh, this is so heavy. What the? Whoa. I need to hit the gym. Swole era. You can have the first bite, psych. Oh, yeah. That's great. My arm. I love Indonesian people. You have truly done it with your cuisine. You have truly done it. Five stars. We love a night of family bonding at the red light district, don't we, Ambi? Yes. There's a kid like five years old just here. That's nice. Oh, yeah. Is there like a Yelp or a Zomato for uh, for the prostitutes? Do you think? <laughs> you know. It's like five stars One star. for Stacy. Okay, the night is still not young. It is our last night in Amsterdam. We even went on a cheeky, uh, family-friendly excursion to the red light district. Isn't that? Wasn't that nice, Ambi? Yeah, it's really interesting and insightful girl, girl boss, boss. <laughs> but yes there's one more thing to do in our amsterdam food bucket list and it's visit fibo let's go it's at 10 o'clock you know this is like optimal Fabo hour. This one is open until 3 a.m. so he's not, I'm sure there's like a late night favorite. All right, um, we are here at uh, Rembrandt Square surrounded by uh, people uh, doing the reefer, which is probably like, you know, the main clientele of Fabo, just people on a night out, you know, just enjoying their lives. We got the coffee shop to my left, your right, you know, ideal, ideal Fabo clientele. So this one is a saute croquette and a casse souffle. It's like a pocket rocket of ragu. Let's let's just take a bite. Mmm, mmm. Oh yeah, babe. You know what this reminds me of? What? In a way. It reminds me of the mutton rolls we used to have at Spice Land in, in Panmure. Because it's like the satay one, so it's a bit has a bit more spice, a bit more flavor. 
it's very ragu in texture, so like that paste pate texture. The croquette itself actually is like really nice and crispy. Next one looks like a pillow, not Tempur-Pedic, that's for sure. The cas souffle, which is probably just cheese. Hmm. Yeah, it's cheese. Like nothing more to expect. No cheese pull. No. Oh uh, yeah, let's, let's try to do a cheese pull. No, <laughs> not gonna do it. <laughs> we actually went to the one at Dom Square, and that was closed. So don't go to that when you're around in Amsterdam looking for some late night munchies, because we tried to go there and it was closed. Ah. Uh. Not like we have the munchies. No, we don't. We would be in no state to vlog. Very nice way to end our last night here in Amsterdam with a Netherlands classic, Fabo. Okay, with that being said, even though we had the most like stereotypical Amsterdam-y um, fast food, fried food, we did have some amazing, amazing Surinamese and Indonesian food today. It also goes to show like sometimes the food that you eat isn't just food, it's more than that. It's history, it's politics, all in one. It tells stories of families and traditions. Sometimes happy and in this case a dark colonial past with Suriname and Indonesia. But nonetheless, they were amazing, amazing meals. And anyway, uh, thank you guys for watching another one of our food and travel videos live from Rembrandt Square in Amsterdam. We're off to Brussels next, so watch out for that and see you on the next one. Bye-bye. Bye! -bye. Bye.